everyone this is Mindy and welcome back to another video for today's card I'm going to be creating a new year's card with stencil paste and stencils so to start with I need to allow myself some dry time so I'm beginning my card with my background I have a piece of storm cloud cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to be doing some ink blending now my main thing that I really want to keep in mind with this is that I am going to be using the sunburst backdrop die and that has a center to it that I will be leaving in there, but I wanna make the center lighter than the outside edges of my card. So I'm starting by just ink blending the edges. I'm starting with River Rock ink and using a blending brush to just lightly blend that towards the center. I wanna keep that center light, so that's why I'm using a blending brush today. It helps keep that transition really smooth. Now I'm going to bring in soot. And I wanted to have it kind of a little bit darker. I'm not going in as far as I did that previous color. The soot wasn't quite as dark for me as I wanted. So I'm bringing in black licorice. Now after these dry, it does kind of dry back a little bit. So if you want to brighten that center up just a little bit more, you could bring in some Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink, and gently apply that to the center. And then I'm going to bring in the Sunburst Backdrop Dye. I'm gonna line that up with my ink blended panel and I'm gonna hold that in place with post-it tape so it doesn't shift around and run that through my die cut machine. Now, when I pop this out, the center does stay in place and I wanna make sure it stays there. So I am going to flip this over and secure that centerpiece in the back with some post-it tape. I'm going to be applying a stencil to the front and I had a hard time deciding which stencil I wanted to use. There are two of them I was deciding between. There is the Starry Sky and also the Confetti. Both of them would be great, but I don't use the Confetti one enough, so I decided to go with that today. And it is a two-piece stencil, but I'm only going to use the one layer. I placed my background on my Make Art Station, and I'm holding the stencil in place with my magnets. Then I'm taking a silicone spatula, and I'm just going to scoop out some of the gold stencil paste and I'm going to spread this over my entire panel here. Now this spreads super easy, so I'm just applying that and I'm gonna drag that down, making sure to fill in all of those areas of the stencil. I also kind of debated between the silver stencil paste and the fairy dust for sparkles, uh, but I did go with gold because I really wanted to keep with a black and gold and kind of a gray or silver theme. Now one tip I really wanna share that I kind of wished I would have done was applied the Yeti ink first. I wanted, I should have actually taken that Yeti ink and applied that light layer of white ink. That would give it kind of a base color and really make this stand out a lot better against a dark cardstock. This still worked out really great, but that would be my tip if I were to do this again. Then I just carefully removed that stencil and I am going to wash that off in my sink because I don't want any of that stencil paste to dry. And I'm taking my finger and just kind of running along the edges to clear that up so it doesn't dry like that and dries rough in case I wanted to use the full front panel and not trim it down. So while that's drying, I am going to work on coloring some images. I knew I wanted these adorable little dogs. This one, this first one I'm coloring is from Furry and Bright. I also had stamped that little dog from Joy to All, but I didn't end up using it. I also have some balloons and some of these cute top hats from Bicycle for You. I have some party hats from Scoot and Buy and Really High Five. And the cat comes from the stamp set Meow You Doing. All of these images were stamped on the 80 pound white cardstock with Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink and coloring in with my Copic markers. I have all of those colors listed at the top of the screen here for you. For the dogs, I use the same colors on each, which is E57, 55, 53, and 51. For the ears, I did E79, 77, and 74. And I'm going to make my cat gray to kind of just go along with my gray and black theme that I was going to go for the card. So for the cat, I will be using neutral grays, which is going to be N9. N6, N4, and N2. 
Now, my original idea was going to be adding the party hats to the critters, but when I was going to grab the balloons from Bicycle for You, I found that little top hat and I just fell in love with that. So I made sure to stamp it twice because I really wanted to use that instead. We always have top hats for New Year's instead of the party hats. So I will be mainly using that. So for those, I just grabbed some dark colors and a bright yellow to add that to the hats. For my balloon, I have N9, N6, and N2, making sure to leave that little highlight area for the balloons. For yellows, I have Y19, Y15, and uh, Y11. And for my other balloon, I wanted it to kind of look like a silver balloon. So I did some cool grays with C4, C2, and C0. After everything is all colored in, I'm going to line up the coordinating dies, hold them in place with the post-it tape, and die cut those out. Now the last piece for my card is going to be these sentiments. So off screen, I did die cut some letters from the Kohl's ABCs, and I'm spelling out Happy New Year. I love this smaller font because I can really make bigger sentiments and customize that on the front of my card. So I die cut all of the letters twice from 110 pound white cardstock and once out of the pixie dust cardstock to add sparkle to the front of the card. Then I'm just layering those together to create dimension on the front of my card and help separate that from my background. When I was kind of working off camera trying to get an idea what my card was going to be, I decided I wanted to add a little bit more color to this, which means I wanted to have a yellow base. So I am taking my background now that it's dry and I'm cutting off about an eighth of an inch off of each end. And the reason for that is by just cutting off that eighth of an inch, it's going to give me a card size that is four by five and a quarter. And it's also keeping that center or that circle in the center of my card. Then I can just take the tape runner, add that to the back, and attach this to a card front created with sunflower cardstock, and that's going to measure four and a quarter by five and a half. Now that all of my components are ready for the front of my card, I can start getting everything attached. So a lot of this I had to do, or actually just kind of remove the footage because my head was in the way so bad, but I lined up all of my letters on my grid surface, and then I'm placing just some scotch tape over the front of it to hold it together. Now, if it's not completely perfect, I'm going to attach it with liquid glue, which means I have a little bit of wiggle room to adjust it if needed. I added the top hats to the dog and the cat because I thought that was just super adorable. And then once I figure out about where my sentiments are going to go, I'm going to add tape runner to the balloons and place those on the front of the card. I did end up kind of shifting the balloons over just a little bit because where they're going to be attached was just almost too close to the words. And that's also why I have the scotch tape over those words. It's really helping me line everything up and get it in perfect placement. You could use really any type of low tack tape, but I do recommend something that you can see through so that it helps you line things up. Then I'm just adding liquid glue to the back of that placing that on the front of my card, and then I can peel away that scotch tape. And I was shifting it and just kind of moving it a little bit before it really adheres to the front of the card to make sure I'm getting everything straight and spaced nicely. I started with the word new in the middle so I could get everything centered, and then came in with year, trying to center that with the word new right above it, and then finishing it off with the happy at the very top. Now I realized after everything was done, I had quite a bit of space at the very top. And what I end up doing is filling that in with a couple of the top hats or a couple of the party hats that I didn't end up using. So here I just added the critters with some foam squares to pop them up so they have those balloons behind them. And one last thing I decided to do was bring in the white jelly roll pen and just add some highlighting details to the balloons and the critters. So this was a lot of fun to create and I hope this gives you some ideas with these stencils and the stencil paste. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon. Happy New Year! 